Yes, now the recording is also started. Hi students, I hope so everybody is fine and we are just starting today's class, recording is working and mic is also working. I have shared already my screen with you guys and just let me see in the chat, just try saying hello. Okay, so today's PowerPoint slides I also have uploaded. I'll just open the file. So today we have our uh, sixth week and similarly as before we will have assignment just like before make the picture along with when we are working uh, or you can uh, create later but it's easy if you are also working side by side and making your assignment. This is just the list of the topics that we covered in lecture 4, this page and this page and also in the last class we have covered these topics, site contents, creating new document library, creating new folder, creating new calendar app, SharePoint store we have touched and installing and using countdown clock web app web part app and comprehensive search on hub sites uh, document library permissions adding users and members visitors and owners groups and experiencing their permissions and more topics adding users to the groups creating and using custom permission levels, access request settings, if some user will request, send a request to access the site, how we accept it or deny it, and accept request released to the owner's email, and we studied that how members allow members to share the site and individual files and folders and creating a new site column creating a new site content type and activating site features and we will also study a lot of topics our usual login uh, I'm already logged in and I hope so you guys are also logged in. Let me just uh, reconfirm that my login is working fine. Uh, today I'm logging in into Epic browser and uh, this is my Office 365 homepage. And this one is 365 admin center. This page and we go from here, if we click on admin center, we reach 
this page and on this page we click on SharePoint and then we reach to SharePoint Admin Center. From here we click on Active Sites and we get the list of active sites. Previously I had many sites so I just removed those sites because these are a lot of sites. We can see them still in the deleted sites. But in the active sites, I now have only a couple of sites, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, I will just introduce you these sites. This one is our main site. See the uh, address. This is our company name that we created and then SharePoint.com on SharePoint.com. This site is now on SharePoint.com the main site and then more sites are this same address then add sites and this one is created during the uh, this one will be created during also on your uh, site also I just created this one for the week number six and uh, these will be also created today enterprise search center site and Microsoft 365 Learning Pathways. So I will start from this main site today. We can start from this one. The COMP3121 site is a communication site and a site for week 6 is a theme site. They both have different features and uh, diff different advantages. So today we will start on which topic and just go through the slides file. This is our usual login. I just have shown you, you guys also uh, will be logged in already. So we, I started with these three four, five, uh, sites and then I created more. Uh, site for week six. It's also a good idea, a good idea if you guys can create a new site for your week six it's a quick process not very lengthy and we can create a new site and just uh, before going through the next topics i will like to mention and remind that next class we will have our midterm exam so before I was discussing it at the end of the class, but sometimes it's uh, late and students and myself, we are in a rush to complete the class. So let's discuss it just before. So we all remember. So next class will be our midterm. And uh, this will be as usual before, uh, I believe almost all the students are same that we have completed our in uh, fall semester we completed our database course so the midterm will be on the same pattern uh, but today uh, next class this time it will start as usual our class starts at 6 pm so it will start at 6 pm and 20 to 30 questions and three minutes for each question will be uh, at average like if it's 20 question you will have one hour if it's uh, 30 then uh, hour and half uh, calculation uh, but we can remember that three minutes for each question depending upon the number of questions and same things uh, same rules will be applied for this midterm also as before it will be like a blackboard quiz and whatever we have covered that will be that we can expect to have some questions about that it will be multiple choice questions also, we can include true-false questions. Of course, it's an open book. You can consult your notes or whatever you can you want, want to consult. And uh, but if you need to search all the questions, probably it's not a good idea. Maybe you will find difficulty with the time and not able to complete the whole exam. 
uh, backtrack will not be allowed as like before and it's of course possible to get 100% marks it's an open book exam and you can search the questions and but of course if you want to search all the questions it's probably not a good idea you should study before uh, just some points these are just the recommendations they, uh, it's up to you to take them or whatever you have your own strategy of the exam uh, but manage your time you have three minutes for each question uh, this time will be good enough and questions will not be too long or too difficult to think about or to get search but of course because it's open book exam so questions can be a little bit difficult than the questions that we have when it's not an open book question, exam uh, if you are 100 percent sure you can go to the next answer the question and then go to the next one if you are not 100 percent sure you can spend a little bit more time on that question and then you can go ahead you can go through these two slides just the points if you take suggestion it's up to you if you have your own strategy it's up to you okay so today uh, with our lecture before that maybe just uh, i can ask if any question about the midterm you guys can ask Okay, so we just uh, continue with our uh, usual lecture. Uh, today also we are completing our many of the things that we have in site settings and how we reach to site settings. We can reach to more than, uh, we can reach there more than by more than one ways and we can go to site contents then site settings and then site administration regional settings we want to reach there this setting looks like this i'll show you on the my site now i'm closing this window or minimizing it it's on Okay, so on this one, there are uh, more than one type of settings. I just want to show you. If we are just at our main page that shows active sites, if we click on the settings, we see a different type of settings here. And here we have themes and we have language setting also. We can change the language of our main site, uh, our sites and default language and we can change of course the password from here and contact information so this is not a lot of things here so we can if we click on a site then there are different settings for example if we go to this main site that is a communication site Then we go to settings and we will see a different set of settings. Here we have different settings and of course from here we can also go if we click on site information and here we will also discuss these site settings also but right now we are clicking on view all site settings and we will reach on the, our usual page of settings here. I can show you once again that we were here, we clicked on our site URL, then we reach this page, main page, from here the settings will appear in a minute and we click on it, from here we go to site information 
and then view all site settings and we can reach on the settings page. Many of those we have already discussed and some we will discuss today. In the site administration, we have regional settings. So, we will check regional settings today. Uh, if we click on regional settings, we see the page like this. We can change from here the time zone that I have changed already. The region we can change before it was US, English US, I just changed it. And sort order general means uh, with the English language, we have other languages also. Uh, so then sort order will be changed according to that language and calendar we just use the usual calendar otherwise we have other calendars also different countries we can select those calendars if our our clients are using our sites in those countries but we just use the standard gregorian calendar and show week numbers i have just clicked this uh, in the date navigator and we can also use an other alternate calendar also if we have more than one type of audience and from here we can set uh, how our week of the day of the days of the week are working our work days are monday tuesday wednesday thursday and friday and we can start our week from monday or sunday whatever we like and week of the year first week of the year starts on January 1 and of course the office time we can select whatever we have but I'm just setting 9 to 5 and we like 12 hours clock we can set 24 hours also if our organization follows 24 hour clock and if we click OK these settings will be saved and if we go back to the same setting then we can see our regional settings will be saved as we have done see sorry i have made a mistake here or 9 to 5 and then i save again and see if it works i go to regional settings again and see hmm, it's going back again to 9 pm oh sorry i checked a uh, wrong one here I have to select am and then it can be pm on the end time so 9 am to 5 pm and then we save it and we will see if it is saved yeah, now 9 to 5, it is saved. So our first picture is easy one. We just have changed our regional settings and we will take a picture here to show that we have changed our regional settings. So I just take a picture here. You guys can also take picture of your site. Regional settings will be visible and of course, if we see on the uh, top right corner here you will be showing the name of your organization here regional settings and the name of your username or your organization on the top right corner I just take this picture and also save it in the next slide as the example from the class and you guys just write here the title of the picture and this is picture number one that is also very helpful if you guys can add it into your assignments um, because sometimes when I uh, marking your assignments, if there are no numbers, 
it's sometimes a little bit difficult to compare if I cannot quickly remember which picture is this one. Then I have to go back and see in my original file that how this picture looked like. And then I compare your picture once again. And sometimes it's uh, really difficult to come back and find once again the same picture where I was working. So if you guys can also include the picture number, that is really good. And then you will add the title like this. And of course, uh, this box will not be there on your, in your assignment, but this one, this one also is not important. You no need to copy this one. I'm just uh, copying it to emphasize that here your name should be displayed. Okay, so this was our picture number one. I believe it will be easy, not very difficult. Just we went to the regional settings and changed those settings according to our requirements. Then we took a picture and saved the regional settings. Then we go to the next topic. Next topic is Microsoft Lookbook. This is just a new topic and this is also a website app that works with the SharePoint and it creates a, a website for us or many different types of web websites for us. It can create many different types of websites for us and how we uh, reach there and how we create a website. First of all, if we are creating first time, it will ask for the uh, ape dialog. If we have already, then it will not ask once again. Uh, let me just go to the new address and show you. If we go to lookbook.microsoft.com, we will reach on this page. So we will reach on this page and there are many different types of sites that can be created. It's also instructions available in PDF book format if any student wants to see more details and uh, we can click here. This is the main page and then we can see uh, many designs and organizations, departments, team related, community related, solutions, schools related. There are so many designs here that we can create a new website uh, on our, our SharePoint portal. And here we can see examples. And here are some of the example study lead. Available. Okay, so if we click here and we click on uh, teams or community, I'm just trying to find the same one that I created myself. Team communication site, departments, organization, uh, not here. Okay, let's see the example then. Then maybe we can select any one of those. These are organizations, these are departments, and teams. 
and community and solutions I want to select this one training and learning adoption from Microsoft 365 learning pathways so when we click on this one we reach on the main page of training and learning adoption we can go through the site features on demand custom training from Microsoft customizable learning experience build a custom playlist and web parts used are here uh, these will be used in creating that website and contents included will be new site collection admin success center and custom web part presenting dynamic contents we can click on add to your tenant so then we will see uh, what happens next when we click on it add to your tenant Uh, this page will appear and we just uh, fill in the information uh, this information is already here because this site can uh, get the information from the login and uh, this is the name default name given to the website and we just click on the provision and we will see that process will start or ask us is validating prerequisites if there are prerequisites not there then the system will advise us what to do when I click first time I will show you the little bit different experience and then I reached to this page and then after that page like this appeared permission required and then after that the same page came and once this try also failed then I started another time and then it worked so we see this time how it works before it also gave a message like this that I don't have already on my site an app catalog uh, this system needs to create an app catalog on our uh, tenant means the main SharePoint site and SharePoint page uh, if we have then the system will not ask about this one so we just confirm so the system says provisioning has started you will get an email notification when your site or sites are ready to this email address and URL will be this one now the system is in progress sometimes it works quickly and completes the system progress and all the process and sometimes if there are some problems the system cannot work completely then the site will not be created but if the process is successful we will receive an email to receive the email we have our outlook if we click here we will reach to our outlook page that I have closed before it was on let me just click on this one and the outlook page will open so we can see the emails also here Uh, right now we don't have any new email yet so we can just go back and see if the process is complete no the process is not complete yet and for example if we will not have the app dialog we have to create the app dialog also and how this works I'll show you in the slides uh, to create an app dialog sorry. we go to our SharePoint admin center and here we have more features 
when we click on more features it goes here uh, on the page we can see apps the, when we create the first app when we get the first app then it creates the app dialog box app dialog uh, catalog sorry and how it works on the website I'll show you it's still working. Meanwhile, I can show you to get another app. Uh, I log on this page, then on this page, and then on this page. Regional settings. Maybe I can close this one and reach to our settings. I'll just go back to reach to my uh, main website. And here, if we go to not here in our SharePoint admin center if we click on more features we reach up to this page and here we have app configuration SharePoint store settings monitor app usage and license and everything we click on open and then another page will open there we can uh, click on app catalog If we don't have previously an app catalog, we will see another page also that is we will reach here and it will show us that automatically create a new app catalog site. New app catalog site will be created and then we can get the apps. Then we will reach up to the same page that I have reached and reached right now here. And uh, then we can just achieve any one app then with that achieving the app we will get the app catalog also on our website i just go through the process to show to you guys uh, if we click on uh, recently i have added this one uh, app for office uh, if we have any then we will see and if we don't have and we will not see it and if we have made any app requests we can see that or any apps for SharePoint we can see if we have already uh, but here we don't have so we just go back and click on the SharePoint store then we can get some any app uh, many apps are freely available some apps are of course uh, paid versions also so uh, this one i have already uh, so this one is here uh, or we can get another one from a sharepoint store when we go to SharePoint store, we see this page. Let me just see. I think so. The process is completed. No, not yet completed. So here we can choose any app that we can install. And if our app catalog is not created already, it will be created. This is forms. work faster work smarter let me just try this one if it is free and available then we can use these forms uh, just click on this one and see if we can get this one every app has its uh, different style of provisioning so on this one this is 30 days free trial so maybe we can Try another one that is free. This is process automation. This is workflow. Let me just see if we have this one. Yeah, dynamic form. Let's see this one. Uh, it has 19 all five star reviews. So let's try this one if it is free. 
then we can try this one. It does not say anything. So, usually it is free, it does not say anything. And but it says, yeah, it says add to app catalog. So, we can click on this one and so we can read about this one also. Uh, we can see reviews also from here, we can see details. But just uh, quickly, we go through creates forms with freedom and choice and choose from the number of types of fields. Instantly change the order of the question appearing on the form, basically the creating the form. Okay. So, we can click on add to app catalog and we see how it works. Uh, some questions preview app permissions and data access. Yes, we will just allow add this app to all sites and dynamic forms. This is see the system is adding the form added. Good news, all sites in your organization can use this app now. Okay, so if we go back and just duplicate this page, and on this page I go back. see in the list of the apps. Okay, so one app is added. So, if you guys are also following, the main point here was to create a a catalog. So, how that looks like if we go back to our settings, we can uh, sorry, our uh, sites, active sites, we can find a page specially for apes catalog. See, it looks like this apes catalog. If it is uh, not created before, it will, will not be here. And now, as we get an app, this catalog will, will be created. So, mainly we needed to create this app catalog to start our new website that we were uh, trying to get. If we see on the PowerPoint slides, there will be little bit different pages because each app has different pages to complete to get the app. And if we add the same one, we will see the same pages. This time we have added another one. So, we saw a different set of pages. But of course, at the end of the process, we want to see it is added into our site. If it is added, then the app catalog will be already there that we want to see actually. And sometimes when we go to site contents, it is not activated until we refresh the page and then it is activated. We just go there and see at our site, site contents. When we click on a site, then we can go to site contents. I just close these pages. This is the main site. We go to site contents and here we can refresh. But we do not see in the list here documents, no not in the documents, form templates maybe because this was a form template, no not the form template, here we can see our new app site assets. Or we have our 
site pages not on this site okay so we can start with our ape catalog that we wanted to get and want to get this website yes now see this one is ticked so if you guys also have started the process uh, we have already we will get a website like this one we can click right from here or we can go from our uh, main sharepoint page to go to this site if i open this in a new tab it will look like this one and it has some features like similarly previously we have with our sites like this one apply a site template share this site with the others add owners members visitors and upload files post news change the look and some things are a little different uh, i want to sh show you here we have translations also and here we also have uh, page details analytics uh, and especially get started with the admin success center that if we click on this one and i just close this one learning pathways admin success center here we have a list of the resources uh, that we can uh, perform with this one we can access those one what's new and plan your learning content will be many topics and similarly drive adoption and customize learning pathways we can click here and we can add whichever videos or whichever documents we want to see here we also have uh, a short video welcome to my short 365 learning pathways and this is just a new type of website that we can create especially for our organization and we can organize our documents and videos that we want to get for the learning microsoft 365 related topics and we can present for our new employees or for our community and keep them at one place and one good thing is also that if microsoft changes updates any of those documents that will be automatically updated in this website here we can access documentation also administration feedback if we want to get resources and adoption kit we can download download also so this is our uh, new site for the microsoft 365 learning pathways and you guys will also create a similar website and then we will take a picture of uh, this website of course how we will show that here will be your name and here will be microsoft 365 learning pathways anybody is waiting in the queue no. okay so main page and then i will take a picture this page or you can take picture of any page that especially we were there at get started with the admin success center so this will be another example of the picture so i take a picture right now and i'll put it in the slides file so we want to see my short 365 learning pathways and here your username 
and I'm saving this picture in the examples so this picture is also good if you guys can provide this one or the starting page both are good both are the examples of the picture number two for today's lecture let me just see quickly mic is working recording is working and chat and participants are fine so let's uh, go ahead and check the next topic that we will cover and this is the example that I just have shown you before and of course on this one we have uh, more detailed experiences also on our website you can explore that website more topics more pages and you will see a uh, very lot helpful contents on this website just give me a minute Step of tea. Okay, so the next topic, we want to create an other site for our SharePoint collection, uh, but this time we are creating a different site. We have created before a theme site, we have created communication sites, and but now we want to create, there are many different other types that we can use and we can we should experience those different types but today we will experience at least one of those and see what benefits we can get from that type of sites and the name of that template is enterprise search center enterprise search center how we reach there i will show you in a minute when we go to our uh, main page of our SharePoint Admin Center, if we are here, this is Microsoft 365 Admin Center, this is our SharePoint Admin Center, here we have list of the sites and here we also have a button to create new sites before we clicked on team site or the communication site but this time we will click on other options and we reach on this page and here we can also choose a different template choose a template not team site not document center we uh, should try these one also maybe you guys can try yourself or if i will get time next time or any other classes i will try this one also for you guys also and but right now we will click on more templates and see how it works here i just fill in the name of the site or i can fill later when we are there in the template so click on more templates and here we see uh, four templates here in collaboration and many in the enterprise many in the publishing and in the custom also so i want to click on the enterprise and here we have enterprise search center that's a great template i'll show you in a minute here just i write the name enterprise search center three i'm just writing 
Of course, the name just has to be a unique name into our site collections, means whatever sites we have, there should be a new name. And But of course, name may be not really as important to be a unique unless I mean, we need a, for our requirement to see that this is our new site. But here the address has to be, of course, unique. So I'm writing enterprise E search S and center C, ESC3. And here I just choose minus 5 Eastern time. And administrator, we have to choose at least one administrator. Uh, I remember my name. You guys will also remember your name. So M S at. I will just write uh, onto this three num three letters, and then click on this tick sign, and it will get it. If not, we can click on browse also, and then we can select whichever administrator we want to set. So just click it. If it finds, it's fine. It is found already. This is uh, is not allowed to change anything, and we click OK. And then we will see the result when we, we go back into our uh, SharePoint. In a minute, we see this message and it looks like that it's uh, uh, the request is completed or it's not completed. Uh, but we have to see into our SharePoint's site collections that do we have it there? It should be there if we refresh it. If it's not, then we will see. So it's not yet here. It takes sometimes a little bit time. My this site also came after a little bit time, and this one also came after a short time. And uh, just go back meanwhile and see which page I was, you see over there, if it's redirected, then classic sites usually get that one first. Of course, then it's the same thing. If we click on all, then it will be, yeah, see, now it's here, so it could be there also. See, it's so selected classic sites. But if we click all, then it will be also there. Just now it's all, but we just need to refresh. Yeah, see now it's here, enterprise search center three. So how it looks like, appearance is very simple. I'll show you uh, in a minute, but the site function is very powerful. Uh, I'll show you that also. So if we click on this site, the site will be open. This is just the information page like usual. But if we click on the URL, then we reach to the site. See, this is the site. Will not be reached. Let me just click once again. It's not yet activated or uh, not yet online. We can just wait a couple of more minutes or meanwhile we can try with our previous site. I have ESC2 that is here. This site will look like exactly like this one, so simple, uh, but its work is very powerful. Enterprise search, what it means really, it means that if we have any file matching into our enterprise, the entire enterprise, like all these sites, uh, this search engine will get it into the list. And that is really helpful because before we saw for hub sites, we can search on the main hub site and all the associated sites results will come into it. But into this site, we really get the results from all the websites. Let's just try them one or two. 
meanwhile and we just have some documents here into our this site and into our this site maybe we can go to other sites also and see some documents and try to search into there but let me go to first of all to our site for week 6 and I have some documents over there if you guys don't have uh, just create one document or upload one document so this is my site I just have changed some things into it added a new uh, web part and then added a couple of pictures into it I will show you also later uh, the function just I want to also that was a search that I want to uh, reconfirm, recheck. But if we click on the documents, here we see we have these documents into our this site. Site is a site for week six. Here I have one document named Jar Brown College Info. I have one uh, SharePoint online logo. I have a uh, York University info and this like a York U info. Okay, for example, we search for York University. Okay, and we see if our search gets this document. This is our in site of week 6. We see once again the list. These are our active sites. This one is our center that we are using, Enterprise Search Center. C is also here, but it was not activated yet. Maybe we can click once again on it. If it opens, we can really go with three. Yes, I think so. Yeah, now it's working. The three, the two, I will just close. This is two. I'm just closing it. This one is ESC3, Enterprise Search Center 3. So I just write here your university and we see if our search center gets the result from another website yes see the result is here york university and e even we can see that documents review also here and this allows us added follow send or view the library if we can click these things also if we have rights then uh, we can click here like if we click on view library there is no harm we will see yeah, see it gets right away that whole library if we have of course the rights to see this library and we can send this also we can follow, we can edit also. Uh, let's just click on follow and then it will be in our website clicked as following. Okay, so this was one file. I just show you experience with another file also. Uh, this is our site for week six and this was one document on this website. Now I go back and go to another site, this one, and see if we have any documents on to this site. And then we see if our search engine finds documents from another website. Not website, this is our intranet sites. Okay, here there is one document showing the UFT info. There is one document also has alert functionality. <coughs> Sorry. So let me search, click. This is quickly uh, short term UFT, University of Toronto. Let's see if it comes into the search. This is our search engine. We click once a year now. U of T. So. Let me see if the name looks like that. Yeah, UFT info. So it should get it. Just click enter and see. 
Yes, the file is here. It brings it here. Okay. Uh, just to verify, uh, I believe I don't have any file related with some information. I want to just uh, check that uh, what happens if I give an information that I don't have there. For example, uh, let me see if I have any information about China in my website. No, we don't have any page describing anything about China, so we don't have that. Okay, the, just uh, let's see another test alert function, or just, uh, uh, it's okay, we tested that. It works with two documents, so of course it will be working with any of these sites if we have any other information related with our search, search term that will display on the result page. So we will take a picture of this screen also where we have uh, our enterprise search center site working and we will just search the term that we can show any of the results that we have already. And I would like to show you uh, another function that, let's see, I just uh, search George Brown. I have one document there also with this name. So let's search this one. And this time there are two results. See why? Because uh, this document, inside the document, I have written, uh, see here maybe you can see it or if I click it uh, to add it, then we can see, I just click on the add it and it's getting it or maybe open and root. Oh, it's downloaded here. So, or I can show you from here or from any place. Inside the document, I have written info about George Brown College. So, the interesting thing I want to show you is that it's searching inside the documents also. So, this search generates two links. One is for the file and one is for the contents of the file. So, this is a really powerful search engine that we have here. So, uh, I will uh, request you guys that make a document and create a search similar search like this. But if not, then at least there will be one record. Create one document of any name and then search when you have created already this site. Then search from this site and your document result will be there. I just take the picture of this page and here we want to show that this search term is successful. Our system has received has found two results and I just put this page into the example page. This will be our picture number three. Here will be your name and the title will be search is working on the new classic enterprise search center site. So, this is our picture number three. Basically, this is to show also that our search site was created. 
because next one is also similar. So, this was our picture number 3. Mm. Meanwhile, the time has passed quickly and we have more than 1 hour recording already. So, I just stop here and create a, we will create a new file and we take 5 minutes break and we will be back in 5 minutes. I just stop recording.